Hey guys, so new patch today on 13th of December, and with it a lot of big changes have come to the game. Most notable are the Mystic has been finally released, as she has been available for the past week to create but not play. Musa has received a number of buffs, and there's, and there's a bunch of new events, including level up your Mystic events, a new seal collection event with Mystic seals, and Piku the Yeti. So let's get started. So the total size of the game plan has been reduced to approximately 27 gigabytes. Uh, this is pretty nice as a lot of people with uh, lower end computers or just not enough storage space on their computers were having problems with keeping the game on their hard drive. Uh, a few small changes to how the new Trina items work and allowing them to install and in, allowing you to install items while you have these equipped. Uh, as well as having a rolling motion and a few other small fixes for those. Uh, there's a few game world changes. You can now obtain the following items by exchanging Shikatu Seals, which are the main weapon exchange coupon and the sub-weapon sub exchange coupon. So how these work, it's the same as the Awakening exchange coupon. Uh, for seven days, you can switch your current item, so your Kazarka, your Kutum, your Nuver, for any item uh, of any other class you want. Not any item any sub-weapon or main weapon of any of the class you want. So if you're playing on a Dark Knight and you have a Kazarka Kriegsmesser and you activate the main weapon exchange coupon, you can switch to blade, longsword, bow, anything you want repeatedly for seven days. But at the end of those seven days, when this buff goes away, you are stuck with what you have it transformed to. Similar to the value pack and how it works with the appearance change. Uh, you can do as much as you want as long as the buff is active, but as soon as the buff goes away, you are stuck with whatever you have it on. And for 150 seals, that's going to be a pretty hefty price to pay if you mess up and leave it on the wrong item. Do note, though, if you have 150 seals, that it will keep the enhancement option of the item available. So if you have a pen Kazarka and you want to switch classes, this is the best way to get your pen Kazarka onto your new class. Of course, it does cost 150 Shikatu seals, so this will still be a while before anyone can do this. Uh, Balanos and Strandian Tribute Wagon will be disappeared when they get to Calpheon. Uh, a few small cooldown changes bags. Uragon's Shoes and Griffin's Helmet have been added on the selling list at the Night Vendor. So this is pretty big because for a long time these have not been on the seller's list. And that just leaves, I believe, the Kutum sub-weapons that are not on the Night Vendor selling list. Every other piece of boss gear is now there. Uh, a few other small things, a few small NPC changes, uh, a few small mounts, a uh, nice little change to the Dream Horse. So basically what all of this is, is Dream Horses now have fail stacks. Every time you fail on your Dream Horse, it'll get a fail stack. Unlike other normal fail stacks, these are not character bound, they are bound to the horse itself. So if you have a tier 8, uh, if you have multiple tier 8s, you cannot fail on one repeatedly and then jump over to the one you really want to succeed and tr start trying to make that one a dream horse. Uh, the fail stacks will not work, and it'll just have the same chance as starting from zero will. So they are bound to the horse and not to the character. And it will. And if you've already failed at Awakening a Corsa before this update, uh, you get fail stacks retroactively, which is nice. And do note that if a horse with Awakening chance stacks is registered to the horse market and sold to another player, the chance will be reset. So if you've been trying to awaken a dream horse and it's not working, don't sell it out of frustration because you will lose all the fail stacks. The new player, the player that gets them, will not get the fail stacks. This is probably to prevent people with lots of alts from buying the horse on alts with new items and new stacks of silver to try and get their dream horse. Uh, there's a few small class changes. Most classes, it's just a few small fixes. However, the big fixes and the big changes. So I'll mention the Witch and Wizard change because uh, it's actually pretty decent. The casting speed of skills when mounted has been synced when not mounted. Uh, this might make mounted Witch and Wizard viable again. Uh, and these were actually pretty strong before Awakening came out when the dominant classes, the dominant class was the Ranger. And mounted Witches and Wizards were also pretty powerful. But the big change this patch to classes is to the Musa. The Musa is getting re slightly reworked. They're trying to fix the Musa. They're trying to br bring it to uh, a balanced state, as currently the Musa is severely underbalanced. So we've gotten a forward guard effect on the skill Dragon Bite, which is one of our main initiation skills in blade form. 
uh, quick slot available when using the skill forward and backward chase has been added on the blooming command explanation which is nice as that can be somewhat laggy sometimes and cause you to stand in place and cast blooming normally uh, basic AP moveset level 60 has been increased by 17 so this one is actually really big 17 AP is a lot end game At level 60 17 AP will cost you hundreds of millions of silver if not billions uh, they did nerf PvP damage by 6.5%, but that doesn't matter because we've gained a bunch of AP. So I believe our PvP damage is actually a bit higher than before. Uh, hit delay of the skill flow backflow has been reduced so that hit can be applied properly. This is the skill that comes after spinning cut, uh, cross cut. Uh, so if you spin to the right and then spin to the left, uh, it goes a bit better now. They've reduced the cooldown time of skill cross crusher by 5 seconds. Um, not... That This change sounds a bit better than it actually is. Cross Crusher is a very powerful skill, but it's not that important to have the cooldown reduced on it, as it's more of a finisher than a constant combo skill like Blow the Belt is. Uh, hits count of the skill Fiery Crevice has been increased by 1. So we've had a few stamina consumption reductions, which is nice, as Musa does have stamina problems due to Chase consuming the stamina. Uh, we've also gotten a forward guard effect after the attack on the one step back skill which is one of the awakening skills it's one of the ones on the right where you can only invest one point in it and the attack range of the skill flow foul play has been adjusted to take place in the same area which is also really nice so these are some nice changes um they're not going to suddenly make musa viable just because of these changes but they're definitely a step in the right direction as long as they keep buffing the musa slowly like this uh, Musa should get to the level of the other classes. It's just a matter of if they buff the right things or if they continue to do things like reducing cooldowns that don't matter as much um, and just kind of small quality of life fixes. Uh, Mewa also got the forward guard effect on skill Dragon Bite. Ninja, it looks here like there's a lot of ninja buffs, but it's actually just a lot of issues being fixed because ninja has a lot of issues. Um, most notably, uh, the Shadow Clone quick slot and uh, attack ranges on ninjutsu shadow stomp uh, has been adjusted to be the same as maximum so basically they're trying to make ninja a bit more consistent and remove some of their bugs uh, striker just more bug fixes like most other classes uh, there's been a few item changes uh, this is mostly for clarity so you might remember a few weeks ago uh, we were, everyone was up in arms about lack of clarity and hidden stats. So they've been trying to be a bit more clear on hidden stats on items. So the stats for extra damage against monsters have been added to main weapon and sub weapon items. Uh, a few small little hidden stats added there. Uh, new event furnitures have been added. There's new winter bundles in the pearl shop for people that want those. Uh, and there's a few new monster changes. So the new boss Piku for the winter event has been added. And there's been a few changes to monster balance in Balanos, Serenity, and Calpheon regions. So leveling 1 to 50, there's been a few changes in the monster balance. And there will be AP caps in place and suggested AP uh, levels to help new players figure out where they should be leveling. Uh, so recommended AP levels. Uh, pretty low, as you can see. It's about the level of a single, I want to say a duo, a green duo weapon. So uh, don't worry about not being able to farm in any of these places. Trust me, everyone will still be able to farm here with no problems. Uh, there will also, Valencia and Camasilvia monsters will start dropping trace items for people that uh, would like a few extra traces from their drops when farming. And they've also adjusted the drops from Serendia and Calpheon monsters because a lot of the monsters had multiple drops, multiple trash drops. Uh, inventories could get cluttered very quickly, which is especially a problem for new players who don't have Black Spirit quests completed and don't haven't bought inventory. So they've consolidated a lot of these drops into single drops from the uh, mobs to make it easier for inventory management. Uh, so this is the list of stuff that will no longer be dropped. And uh, a few small other small changes. The Mansham totems and stuff have been changed a little bit more. Uh, fix an issue where monsters are intermittently, intermittently teleporting. Uh, they tried to fix this last week. Uh, there's still been a few problems, so they're fixing it again. Uh, a few new knowledge and quests. Uh, some new quests through Santo Mazzi. Uh, apart from that, there's not actually too much else that has been changed in this patch that is important. There's a few new UI changes, and just a few more resolved issues. 
uh, like the one where you couldn't enter Kama Sylvia, a 32-bit game client, which was uh, <laughs> kind of game-breaking for people that wanted to go to Kama Sylvia. Um, and it was a bit of a weird issue, but apart from that, not too, too much uh, else that's important. The main things this patch are definitely the release of the Mystic, the new events that are starting, so the Level Up Your Mystic, Collect Mystic Seals, and Pico the Yeti events, the game uh, client uh, change, and the Musa buffs. So definitely the big thing to look out for this patch is definitely leveling your Mystic. Even if you don't feel like you want to play the Mystic, get that extra character slot for one loyalty that's available, and level up your Mystic to 55, because there these are some very decent rewards for very little effort. Um, it does not take very long to get to 55. Anyone that is a striker can literally just throw all their gear over their Mystic right now and be super geared and one-shot everything until level 55. And it gives several tens of millions in silver uh, worth of items, as well as a cliff skill add-on guide, which can be useful to people that want to reset stuff, and some Lauren family gift boxes, which is nice if you uh, would like some more shots at boss gear. Anyways, guys, those are the patch notes for 13th of December 2017 for Black Desert. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you like it, and have a good one.